It is Sylvan Pat's forte, chiseling memories out of stone. But this, a monumental job, this. A Belgian shaping the story of a young Canadian killed in the fog of an old war into a remembrance still relevant in today's peace. It's important to conserve the, the history for children for many years. A hundred years after the Great War ended, countless of the simplest memorials still stand. A headstone, a name if they were lucky. In one Belgian cemetery, enemies in life still lay together in death along with the last Commonwealth soldier to die in the war to end all wars. Killed on November 11th, 1918, two minutes before the hostilities ended, was 26-year-old George Lawrence Price from Nova Scotia. Reminders of his life survive. A record of an early misdemeanor at home. His conscription papers. And so you've never seen these before? No, I haven't. The stoic postcards he sent to his little sister Florence. I still think of you and we'll see you soon. That be from Brother George. That sister went on to have her own children. George, her brother's namesake, is now 90. Heir to the grief and love and whatever was left of the uncle he never knew. They were hanging on her wall including that picture now hanging on his wall. It's his family, it's part of me. His blood ran through my veins, it's... and I'm very proud of him. But I know he didn't want to be there, because he didn't want to shoot anybody. What also survives? different stories of how exactly Uncle George lost his life. That morning, word went out of an armistice at 11. Yet in one version, Price still leads a patrol to check out a building. According to Art Goodmurphy, who was with him, he spoke to CBC in 1965. Well, when we got to the bridge, on a little knoll, or hill off to our right, we can see Germans mounting machine guns. So Price said, let's go outside and see what's going on outside here. So the two of us went outside, and all of a sudden, bang, one shot came from way up the end of the street. Got him right through the back and through the heart. And he fell dead right in my arms there. It was not an accidental shot, it was a sniper leg, you know. And I went right up to Major Ross and told him that Price was killed. Oh, gee, did he blow a fuse. The war's over, he said, the war's over. And poor old Price, he never knew that it was over, you know. He was just doing his job. Being last, a tragic distinction that lifted Price from certain anonymity. And a hundred remembrance days later, Sylvain Pat is shaping a monument in his name. He chose bluestone from a local quarry to make art that reflects the destruction and to remember a young man whose death symbolizes the futility of war. For me, why commemorate just one person? So, in the same time, it's George Price, but it's everyone who commemorates a little bit. Price had just survived the last hundred days of brutal fighting and watched so many others die. To just miss that moment, the carnage is declared over, and later the victory march in the main square in Mons. A city that still hasn't forgotten the Canadians who set it free at tremendous cost. There are tributes in more than a few corners. As there are in Le Rhin, near where he actually fell. There's the school, 
Et ça, c'est la photo originale. And just down the road, a neighbor with her own little piece of the story. 28e bataillon. Marilyn Lahaye doesn't know where her husband got that picture, but she always shares it with visitors. Et alors moi, mon mari m'a dit, Marilyn, tu gardes cette photo et tu ne donnes à personne. Mais un jour, je sais pas, euh, j'ai voulu montrer cette photo. Et c'est ça qui a tout, tout déclenché. <laughs> More than three decades ago, the city named this footbridge after George Price. And now the time comes to mark 100 years after he was killed in the dying minutes of the Great War. How do you bridge the past to the present and keep his memory alive and relevant in the modern world? A lot of thinking has gone into that here. L'heureuse plan for November 11th has been months in the making, overseen by Corentin Nalentambi, age 26, the same as Price when he was killed. He was killed somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. Yes. Yeah. He too has heard the stories, including the more romantic version, which had Price walking over here to say hello to a young woman. He crosses that bridge and is then shot by a sniper's bullet to the heart. How does such a tragedy look through the eyes of a 26-year-old now? It's strange because this guy uh, was from Canada, a uh, city in Canada, and he died in Europe, not the same country, not the same continent. And all those young persons came to save a country, save um, more than one country, save an, an idea, an idea of freedom. The challenge here is how to tell that story. Back across the George Price footbridge is where they will gather this weekend to remember him. My sculpture is uh, too, too proud. Part of the plan. Many light, many shadow. Is unveiling Sylvain Pat's monument. Why so many angles? For me, symbolize many faces for the while. Yet, of all the monuments to Price, none perhaps speaks of the enduring sentiment here than the rose just given his name. We know that uh, these roses will travel around the world, and uh, it's, uh, yes, the, the message of peace that George Price gave uh, us his life during the war. We keep uh, hope, and we think that the future will be better than in the past. Back on the shore is where Price grew up. His nephew, George Barkhouse, is planning to return to Belgium. I'd like to be able to be pay my respects back to the people again for what they've done. Going with him is his granddaughter, Sylvia, for whom November 11 has always been personal. It was always something that had directly affected the family, so it was always something you knew in the back of your mind that, oh, okay, yeah, these are real people. This. This meant, these people meant something to somebody. After a lifetime of telling the story, the inherited pain lingers. And this is a little flower knitted flower. Along with the most precious of mementos, a knitted flower from Price's fiance, colored by his blood when he was shot. Can you tell me why it's so precious to you? Because it's a contact that I lost. And an uncle I never knew, nor will made me never. Pardon me. <laughs> it still catches me. It's, uh, the facet for In the Pat's world. vision of Price too, there is a drop. Whether it's blood or a tear, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm very yeah. happy. One wasted young life. Now a permanent reminder of the pointlessness of losing so many in a place that didn't forget. Nalayed, CBC News, Le Reux. Belgium.